Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and BeamNG Drive. Uh, today, as you probably can tell, we're making ourselves the most reliable car possible in automation. Um, this is a few hours of work just testing and tuning of different engines, different bodies, etc. to see if we can get any more reliability than what we can get today. So what we're going to be doing is building the most reliable beast ever. As you can tell, it is a very tank style kind of body. It's this armored car. I forget what this, this mod is called, but it was updated quite recently for the newest version. Uh, we're using the 165 inch wheelbase, which is absolutely massive. The engine itself might not be the most powerful thing, but that's that's okay. So first things first, steel chassis. Now steel panel material, steel is just reliable. You, you can't go wrong with steel, ladder chassis type. Um, this doesn't really matter, steel to AHS steel, this doesn't affect reliability. We're just going to go AHS because it's lighter. Um, there is no budget for this car at all. The cost can be whatever we want. We're going to quality spam everything. Just because the point of this build is to make it as most, or the most reliable, as physically possible. Uh, we can go for longitudinal or transverse. We're going to go for transverse, and I'll show you guys why. Uh, we don't need a huge engine, surprisingly. Leafs front, Leafs in the rear, that's the most reliable suspension setup. And then plus 15, there we go. Nice and easy. New engine, we'll leave it with just Family 9 variant 1 for now, because that's okay. Um... We can go for an inline 4, inline 3, 5, 6. Anything that's inline is going to be the best for reliability. I think they're all pretty much the same. I'll go for an inline 6 for now. We'll go for cast iron, push rod, 2 valve. We'll make it like a 1 point, a 2 liter maybe for now. We'll probably play around with the size later on. A 2 liter is fine. Uh, forged, lightweight, titanium, a lightweight forged please. Plus 15, there we go. Thanks for that free reliability. Uh, this is probably fine. Lower the cam profile down because this thing is not going to rev too high still. And what we're going to do, surprisingly, you guys might think that having a naturally aspirated engine is probably better for reliability. Well, y you're wrong. You're, you're wrong. You're just simply wrong. Uh, in automation, at least, turbochargers with plus 15 quality and no intercooler are actually more reliable than... Uh, and having, like, just a, we'll tune it more, but, like, having just a really terrible turbocharger that's plus 15 quality is more reliable than not for some reason. Direct injection. We can do single or per cylinder. I think it doesn't affect the reliability. Performance intake or standard is the same. 100 octane fuel. And plus 15. To the exhaust, just just nothing. <laughs> this is fine. So right off the bat here, the engine itself is 104 reliability. This is this is before tuning. Now if we go ahead and you see this RPM limit, if we go ahead and just yoink that down, there's 115 reliability. We're only making 47 horsepower, <laughs> which is terrible. But uh, no, no, that's that's actually that's it's actually just terrible. We can do a per cylinder, it doesn't really matter. It actually saves us weight, so we'll do that instead. We'll give it more fuel. Just a bit to 13. We have tons of octane left to go here, so what we gotta do is actually, I think we, if we play around with the compressor size a bit, nope. So, big compressor. That doesn't really matter, actually, that's fine. The turbine. No, no, this is all actually pretty good. Okay, no, no, we're at max reliability. The ER ratio, we can get a bit more if we go up a little higher. And the boost, this doesn't actually do anything really. Yeah, it doesn't really matter, this turbo is so terrible anyways. So, well, we can go to zero boost, we can go to max boost. If we take off the turbocharger... We've gone down to 110 reliability only. So now we're up to 115 because we have a turbo that does nothing. Uh, compression will just yoink that up to 12.5 for now. And ignition to a maximum 100 ignition timing. So 56 horsepower. We can actually make the exhaust smaller. Now the engine is obviously insanely underpowered. We'll go ahead and tune it later on. Like this doesn't really matter. This engine is going to be absolutely uh, terrible regardless. 12.9 to a 13. A 13 to 1 compression, that's reasonable. 57 hordes, 150 torque. Now, okay, usually, usually, you'd think that's fine. That's like an okay amount of horsepower for a tiny subcompact car with a, you know, uh, I mean, 2 liters is pretty large for this power, but you know, for a small car, it'd be fine. But this thing is anything if small. Um, anything but small, not if. Anything but small, sure. Uh, so we, plus 15 body quality, this thing is gonna be absolutely a dinosaur on wheels here. It's gonna be super slow. Uh, super old, super just tanky, it's gonna be just awful in every way. Front wheel drive, I know, we've gone there. Four speed. Top speed is 107 kilometers an hour. <laughs> it can do about 63 miles an hour, I like that. Uh, open diff please and thank you, plus 15 on the quality. Radial, this isn't actually affected, I don't think, reliability wise. We'll just go for like decent sized tires, plus 15. Um, so drum 2S, 2LS in the front is more reliable. We can go for anything in the back, I think, as long as it's not ceramics. Maybe anything in the back. It doesn't actually matter. This is fine. Uh, that's fine for now. 
seats don't really matter. And we'll go to... We're just going to go to... I think we'll do none. I think electric's better. This is this is fine. Okay, so let's take a look in one sec. Let's go... Just, let's just do this. Okay, so normal suspension tune right off the bat here. We've got zero reliability because the tires... The front tires bloat. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so the, yeah, it's, it, it's too heavy. This car is so heavy that it, the front tires blow out, which is pretty reasonable, I'd say. Now we're fine. 113 reliability. That's pretty good. Like, some would say that's, that's a decent a bit of reliability. That's pretty good. So the carbon ceramics don't actually affect it. We'll just go for massive carbon ceramics. Plus 15 quality there is 114. The cooling airflow. No, we need 100 cooling airflow. Yeah, 114. 115. We're good. Doesn't affect reliability. Interior. 115.5. We'll save some weight in the front here. This actually makes it worse. Safety makes it less reliable. 115.7. This makes them less reliable. And fun fact though, electric power steering, nothing else besides electric, is actually an improvement somehow. I don't know. Plus 15 quality doesn't actually affect it, but whatever, it doesn't really matter at this point. And plus 15 again. So if we just do this, we'll just do a sport tune, because honestly this car is quite sporty as you probably can imagine. 167 safety, 123 prestige, and 116.8 reliability. If 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 that's not reliable, I don't know what is reliable to be honest, because boy oh boy is that... Can we, can we actually, this, this doesn't affect it, does it? Yeah, okay, this is fine. I'm not sure if we can actually get any more reliability out of this than what I've actually tried for. I have done a, a good bit of testing. This is actually the most I've gone to. 116 point. If you guys can get more, let me know in the comments below. Uh, this build was suggested was suggested in a poll on my dis oh, on the YouTube channel a few a few days back, last week or something like that. And uh, yeah, thanks for voting on it, guys. You know, it was a pretty cool vote. If we actually make it smaller, we actually get more reliability. 115.2. The same. So it doesn't actually affect it that dramatically. We are losing horsepower, 55 horse, 144 or so torque. There's not really much we can do now to increase the reliability. Like this, it's the same. Uh, coils are worse, plus 15 is going to be fine. So, looks like 116.8 is the current best I can physically muster. Oh god, <laughs> top speed is uh, it's only 66 kilometers an hour. Um, so what we're going to do is design this thing. It's going to look like, uh, of course, it, it's a very prestigious, very safe and very reliable vehicle. We're going to design this thing like an army truck, probably, I'm thinking, because I think that suits the theme. And this body looks really cool in the first place, it was recently updated, and I've never got a chance to do a build with it. So we're going to design this thing as like an army truck, I'm thinking. Um, the most reliable army truck in history, also the most depressingly slow. So sit back, relax, guys, and of course, I hope you enjoy. And finally, guys, we are starting the build for our most reliable vehicle in automation. But a quick note to self, this car is not supposed to be the best designed, it's not supposed to be the most beautiful, not supposed to be the most detailed, it's supposed to be the most reliable. Design is coming a little bit second in this build today, um, similar to my other cars like my uh, highest MPG car ever, etc. So what we're doing right now is uh, adding the front grill and the front headlight housing using of course reverse dog tape and some grill cutouts, etc. So it's going to have this triple horizontal grill in the middle, similar to the H1 Hummer, the Humvee, except instead the, the, the Hummer has uh, vertical slats and we have horizontal slats. Uh, we have some big rectangular or square headlights next to that and a big bumper in front so far. We're adding a bit more details to this side and below the car. It's not supposed to be the most beautiful car. It's not going to be the most designed car, but it's going to be pretty basic. Uh, we're working on a, a basically a handle on top of the hood. Uh, similar to the H1 Hummer has basically a place where you can hook it up to a helicopter and you can fly this or drop this in any war zone area or whatnot. Although this car is severely underpowered to be in any war zone. It wouldn't make it through anything. We added a, a vent in the middle hood area. Uh, adding some turn signals to the front end and just tinkering with some design on the side and thinking of what to do next. Adding some uh, top lights to the front of the car. And adding some mirrors to the very, very small windows which definitely wouldn't be street legal for this car. Uh, but th that's okay. We do add four windshield wipers. I'm not too sure why I added four, but it looks pretty cool, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, now, I'm trying to decide what kind of wheels I want for this car. I spent a good bit of time actually looking at the Hummer's wheels and seeing what I can get that's kind of close. I do end up going with these very basic eight, I think it's eight lug wheels at the very end. Uh, basically, heavy duty off road vehicle wheels. They don't look the best. Um, I don't think they fit the car the best, but they are eight lugs and they are pretty heavy duty looking at least. Adding some hinges for the doors of the vehicle and big door handles as well. The back, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, before we get to that, we are adding a ladder on the side and then some roof rails on top to add some cargo that you want to haul. Some very basic taillights in the rear, a bumper in the front is added, and a bumper in the rear is being made as well. Adding some more lights to the rear and tinkering with door handles, etc. 
uh, changing the color to a nice green, and then adding an exhaustive and a few details here or there, like some tow hitches or some tow hooks and a big tow hitch in general. Uh, then some detail on the windows, etc. And in front of us, we have the 2020 Titan 1.9 Turbo. And like I said guys, in front of us is the 2020 Titan 1.9 Turbo. Uh, and the design is of course based off of the H1 Hummer, just a little bit. Uh, this is a more, very simplistic build, it's, it's not really meant to be crazy for design, it's meant to look kind of cool. Uh, the body speaks for itself really, I think in this case, and the car is meant to just get the most reliability possible. Um, but spoiler alert, it's going to be so awful to drive in Beam and G that it's going to be hilarious. Um, so before we actually hop into Beam and G, the design, again, similar to an H1 Hummer in the front. Um, the side, it's, it's similar. It's got a ladder. We got a roof rack or several roof racks because, well, why not? Tail back end is just super dead simple. There's nothing there even. Um, but if you look over here. The engine is underpowered for the car's weight, which is going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. What about the tires? Are the tires actually... Are, are the brakes good even? Let's see. So the brake force is actually really decent. We can actually change this. Now it's decent brake force. We got too much now. We can actually lower it down. That's that's not enough actually anymore. Okay, that, that was not enough. So we can lower down the, the pad type a bit. Just a bit. So 50-50. We will make the front brakes quite a bit smaller because we've got more than enough brake force to stop this thing. But it's looking like it's going to be overall a pretty good car. Um, 15,600 pounds, it cannot do more than 67 kilometers an hour, quarter mile, in 45 and a half seconds. Crazy. 2.3 million cost, which is not terrible. Um, but a 9.1 MPG. Again, it's pretty reasonable, I think, for a 15,000 pound car. Um... I want to see this car on the jump arena. We're going to see if this thing can actually jump at all. And we're also going to see if this thing can tow. Those are the two important things. Can this thing do a jump? Can this thing tow? Uh, and is it really the most reliable car? So we're going to try to crash it and see how much damage this thing could take. I'll see you guys in Beeman G in just one second. And finally, we are in Beeman G Drive. This is the jump arena. And the car looks okay. The, the grill is doing this really weird teeth thing. And I'm not sure how I feel about that, to be honest. It looks better in BMG than I think it does in automation almost, to be honest. Now, we're revving it. It sounds kind of fine, actually. It makes negative boost the whole time. If you just launch it. In first. Yeah, that's what it does. So if you just, just floor it in first. <laughs> it's so bad, it's good. Come on, baby. We're almost in second. There we go. The second gear. Look at that. Come on. I'm thinking it's going to do pretty good. There we go. Okay, well, let's just use the clutch. Sorry, I braked instead of use the clutch. Well, we're fine. So, yeah, we're at, we're much over the top speed right now. Over 200 kilometers an hour. That's pretty decent, I feel like. 220. 224. About. Our air speed's 260. There we go. That wasn't bad. Can we break it? Can we actually save it? Can we save it? Hey! Can we save it somehow? Oh, it's flooding. No! So, as you can tell, odds it's not a fast car. It, 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 yeah, there's there's no speed. At all. We are on semi-slicks, so that's why the braking was so terrible in the sand. Come on. That's <laughs> so slow. It is front-wheel drive. That's going to give us a lot of grip in the front end, to be honest, right? So, we made it up. Uh, it would increments of what, 10 meters? Ha, <laughs> that does it. Oh no, that does not look good. That's not ideal. This is, this is totally how that works. This is fine. Let's try to get some speed here real quick. Nice and quick. It's pretty quick. Now. Let's just go like this, we'll reset this. Oh my gosh, the Titan is pretty much fine. The wheels, the axle's off, so just a little bit. Let's just, um, does it drive still? Oh. There we go. And it still drives with one hit. 
That's not bad at all. Engine broken! It's it's supposed to be broken, but it still works actually somehow. Come on. It still pretty much works honestly at this point. I feel like this is a victory in my books. So the, the, whole, the whole point of this obviously was just to get maximum reliability. And I think we, we've done that. 117 reliability. If you guys can beat it, let me know in the comments down below or post in the Discord. I'll have a link to download this card down below in the description if you guys want to download it as well. Because just to check it out, the whole point of this one wasn't to be the most beautifully designed card today. It wasn't to be the best of the jump arena, because it wasn't. It wasn't to be the best off-road or the heaviest. It wasn't, to it wasn't supposed to be a lot of things. The point of this was just to get max reliability. There's a, you know, it's what you guys wanted. Um, some other builds are coming up soon in the future, so stay tuned for those. I had some streams as well, some other games as well as Automation, Beam, and G, etc. So, it, more of a just a chillax day today. Just relax and building a the high reliability car for a bit. If you guys like the video, leave a like down below. Make sure to leave a comment too, because it helps me out a lot. And subscribe. Uh, and don't forget to join the Discord in the description for some memes. I mean, I mean, I, I say don't forget to, I mean, don't, join the Discord or else, basically. Join the Discord, guys. Of course, you gotta be 13. Um, but yeah, have a great day, guys. And hopefully I will uh, see you guys in the next build.